All right. So good evening, everyone. Welcome to today's episode of True It All with Color Lugodi. True It All is all about giving you encouragement, giving you hope, and um, certain things that may be troubling you out. Um, True It All is about using our stories to encourage others. This program, uh, I mean, it has run for four years now. And um, it has really been blessing lives. The testimonies that I get uh, from time to time has always kept this program going on. I didn't plan to make it go for four years. But then um, every new episode seemed to always meet somebody's need. And um, I just feel like, okay, so why not? And then people will always just suggest and say, why don't you let um, talk about this um, this topic? Why don't you let look at Twitter from this angle? And um, of course, I listen to, to the viewers because you are the ones that have kept this program going on. So I, keep, I need to keep um, getting your feedback and then following whatever you say. All right, so thank you so much for um, having stayed with True It All this far. Um, for those joining us for the first time on True It All, thank you for joining, you're welcome. Um, the name of this program was actually derived from my book, True It All. True It All happens to be the memoir of my many trials and triumphs. I've been through every, every a lot of the type of troubles you can ever think of in life have been through them. Um, yes, disability was like the first one, and then disability brought in a lot of um, a lot of emotional things. Today, you think you have that high self esteem, tomorrow is low, and then you want to do this or that, and people will say, "No, you can't do it because of your disability," you know, and then of course. It was time to get married. Who wants to marry somebody with disability? You know, but God kept on working it out and then got married, trusting God for the children to come. And then he started counting the years. I know what it's like for some of us to trusting God for children. I know what it's like for you to be counting months, counting, <laughs> counting years, first year, second year, third year. 50 year, 40 year, 50 year, 60 year. For us to have our first child, it took seven years. And then for us to have the second child, it took another seven years, you know. Um, so I understand what all those things are like. And um, that's why I use my life to encourage you. If the Lord can do it for me, he will do it for you also. I've started business before that seemed as if it was doing well and then the next moment it went all the way down um but by his grace and who i am today i've been down now the lord has brought me up the bible says the righteous can, will fall seven times and the lord will keep raising him up each of those seven times and that's what god has done for me and that's why i wrote the book through it all um, I will encourage you to read through it all if you have not read it. <laughs> somebody told me, one of my younger brothers, actually, not just somebody, a friend told him that they've been using your book through it all um, as a Bible study guide, I mean, manual in a church here in Lagos, and uh, they've gone several weeks. And, you know, I was, I was humbled. I was amazed and I was just wondering, so what are they discussing? You know, I, I've asked for the contact of the pastor. I would really love to meet with him, if possible, meet the members of the church. Um, because I've really, I never knew it was going to get to that point that Creator will be used as um, a manual, I mean, in, in for Bible study. I tell you, it's actually a manual full of encouragement. And um, if you want to find the scriptural backings for why you suffer, how to get out of it, I want you to read through it all. It's a story of my life. 
and I just poured myself into that book so that at least somebody also can read it and really be blessed. All right, so if you made the book, um, just follow all those links um, below. You can go on seller, you can go on tia.com.ng, and you can go on um, Amazon and just look for True It All by Color the Body. All right, so God bless you so, so, so very much. Um, tonight, we are going to be talking about relationships. We are going to be talking about marriage. We are going to be talking ab about um, how to attain um, intimacy in, in marriage. And um, my guest today is somebody very special to me. She's a big, big sister, big auntie to me. Um, but I'm so grateful that she obliged to come on Twitter today. But because we try to introduce her to us, I want us to look at this scripture, Philippians chapter 2. And um, let's look at um, let's look at Philippians 2, verse 12. It says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Of course, this, is, this, this, this was one of the admonitions of Paul to the church in Philippi, or Philippi, like, like it's called. But the area I want to really stress um, tonight is when he said, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Salvation, yes, you knelt down, you said, Lord Jesus, come into my life came to your life um for you to grow in this grace you need to keep praying you need to keep reading the bible you need to keep fellowship share fellowshipping with others and with time you need to start sharing even the word of god with others while you are doing all this and you are observing to do whatever the bible admonishes us to do as you're reading the bible don't be a reader of it be a doer of it so paul said keep working out your salvation this way keep doing things that will make you keep growing things that will keep, keep you being relevant in the things of god you know um now because we are talking about marriage today i'm applying this scripture if the bible can say work out your salvation with fear and trembling. I want to admonish and employ everyone that is married or the ones that actually are about to wed or get into this um, institution called marriage. Please, marriage does not work itself out. That you got married does not mean that things will just start rolling on by itself. You need to work out your marriage consciously work on your marriage consciously work on on oneness consciously work on how we can always make love to remain consciously work on making sure there is always peace consciously work on how you will always have that affection one for the other consciously work on not making conflict to have this place in this relationship consciously doing it Bible says, work out your salvation. So I say unto you also, work out your marriage. Work out this union that you have found yourself. It won't work itself out. No, it won't. That you have a car does not mean the car will drive itself out and take itself all over the place. Um, well, I know we are in the days of cars that don't need drivers. But for your car to serve you, you are the one that will pick up the keys, turn on the ignition, change the gear, and then move on. The same way you treat your marriage, consciously do everything. If that car will serve you, you must keep working, changing the engine from time to time. Make sure your tires, I mean, the gauge is okay. Um, ensure that it's fuel. Ensure the Jaya all is there because you want that thing to serve you long. 
please, the same thing you do to your union or your marriage. Husband, wife, please, we must agree that this thing must work. Divorce happen because people always assume that marriage will work itself out. And then at the point, because we are not working it out, and we just don't, don't understand why is it that we so much loved and cherished ourselves before we entered into this union, but we don't know what happened again. Please, you are not working at it. One is always angry. The daughter is, daughter is cool-headed. How can we work at it that both husband and wife can get to that point that we are cool-headed together? We are working it out. All right. So please, if, my, if salvation is something you need to work out with fear and trembling, I say unto you also, your marriage is worth every work that you can put into it. And please do it not arrogantly. Do it with fear and trembling and you will see the difference. God bless you. All right, so viewers, we go now into the training, I mean, the interview session of um, True It All for this episode. And um, like I've said earlier, our guest today is um, a big auntie to me, someone very, very special, someone that one always look up onto. And... Um, when one of um, the regular followers of Twitter called me one day and said, uh, you've brought a man to talk about intimacy in marriage. Um, we need, we need, we need a, a woman's view to eat. And of course, when it comes to marriage, the only person <laughs> that comes to my mind anytime is um, Mrs. Bola Daniel. All right, so um, when, when, when that request was made, I just put a call across to her and I'm so grateful that she obliged me. And um, with every joy of the Lord in my heart, I welcome Auntie to, the, to True It All today. Auntie, you are welcome to True It All, man. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you so much for um, granting this request. I know you've really been so busy, and you're a very busy person, so I don't take this for granted, ma. We give God all the glory. Thank you also for inviting All right. Um, so like I always want us to do, I always want my guests to introduce themselves um and then uh, we take it from there so auntie i want you to introduce yourself to the i mean yourself to the audience <laughs> well as you have said my name is adebola Dan. i am a pastor's wife and a pastor too of course i used to teach so i'm still a teacher i used to teach chemistry before I joined my husband in full-time ministry. So that's what we both do now. I am a wife of one husband. <laughs> we are blessed with four biological wonderful children and many other spiritual children. So, so how long have you been married, man? Son. Well, July 29 this year, we, we turned 35, 35 years that wow. we've been married. Wow. All right. Thank you so much, Auntie. I wanted you to mention um, the number of years you've been married so that people will know that, um, I mean, experience matters when we talk about marriage. And... I would really employ everyone out there, please. I want you to really um, take your note, your pen and your note, and please be ready to take a lot of lessons.
from Antibola this um, on this episode of True It All. All right, so Ante, I'm curious to know how you and um, Pastor Daniel how you met, <laughs> and now we are cutting mm. out thirty five years. Yes. To the glory of God, I will say it's in God all the way. We met here in Abeokuta. I came here to, I was posted here to teach from the Federal Minister of Education. And it was a state posting. So I was posted to a state secondary school. And I was living within the school compound. So I met a brother whom I had known from one of the schools I went. So we just happened to meet again. He was actually going to a church that you have to pass through my school to enter the church. So we met and we started talking about changes in Abiyokuta, especially concerning spiritual uh, environment. So he invited me to his church, he invited me to Full Gospel Business Life Fellowship, he invited, was in, invited me to his fellowship, which was Glory Time Bible Church at that time. So out of excitement, I was also going from one fellowship to the other. So that was the day the Glory Time Bible Fellowship was going to hold a seminar and they needed a hall. So I was approached to take permission from the school authority for them to make use of the hall and it was given to them. So one of the guest speakers at their special program happened to be my husband that I now married. Of course, normally because my house was within the compound, they put all their stuff and everything that they would need. So I met with him one-on-one -on -one because I had to meet with the speakers. But it didn't really mean anything because my eyes were somewhere else. And actually when we got talking, his own eyes too were, were somewhere else. So that was how I knew him. And then later, the president of the fellowship that came to have the meeting, he was preparing for a wedding. And so his fiance was also looking for a place to stay that would be closer to the fellowship and then they could pray, they could plan. So I was approached also. And by that, uh, Sister Inka, as I used to call her, I still call her Sister Inka. Mm -hmm. So we got to live together in the same place. So naturally, when his affairs will come on a visit, he will likely come with the person that will be my husband on a visit at that time. So when they will go to the classroom to pray, to pray we got talking. I was learning sewing, how to sew at that time. So okay. he will meet me sewing, so we got talking on general things, things like that. So after some time, he started coming alone. He wasn't coming with the fiance of my friend again. So we got talking on many other things. I was not really attending the fellowship, their own fellowship. So I was attending another fellowship. But at the same time, I used to go for their special program and things like that. So it took some time before he eventually made his intention known even on to me. And uh, basically, that's how we met. And when they are having such a program, I used to go to listen uh, uh, to him preach, to him sing also. So it was like a friend of my friend, friend of my friend kind of a thing before it was not looking as if it would become a serious thing that we needed to pray about. So basically, that's how we met. I don't know. Is there any other information? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I, I think I, I think um, this is the first time I'm I'm getting to know that story. So I'm I'm so curiosity was what made it made me to actually ask you. Uh, I actually got okay. to Pastor Daniel right from um, Obafemi Olo University or University of Ife. Then okay. Uh, I mean okay. I knew him as a as a senior a senior brother because I was just getting born again in the fellowship mm -hmm. and he was already a, a preacher in the fellowship. All right, mm -hmm. so we, we we bless God um, 
but the way he walks um, marriages out, the way he brings his own children together, we give him all the praise. Mm -hmm. all right. um, so, Auntie, uh, to the topic of, of, of today, how to attain intimacy in a marriage. Um, actually, my biggest burden is for um, young couples. Those who have just gotten married, two years, five years. Um, there is always that <laughs> illusion that most of them always have that um, marriage will just work itself out. Once we just get married, then marriage, you just start working everything out and then we'll be close and love will always flow. All right. So how can um, couples attain intimacy in marriage? And I would love you to, to cite examples from your own um, marriage so that the younger ones can learn, including us. Thank you, sir. Well, let me first say, okay, intimacy. Intimacy to me is a feeling of closeness. A feeling of closeness, something like that is an emotional connection that must exist between spouses. And uh, I, want, I remember what the Bible says in Genesis 2, verses 24 and 25. When Adam, after he opened his eyes and he saw the helper that the Lord brought unto him, he said, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his own wife, and they shall be one flesh. Even that one, it's talking about intimacy, that he will cleave to his wife, and they will no longer be two, they will be one. Then he, he goes on in verse 25 to say, And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. That also bespeaks of transparency, nothing hidden. They were so close, they were so intimate, that there was no shame even among them, I mean between them. I also normally hear people when they say, we just don't feel connected. And uh, there are people who feel like this, they will say, well, we can't just, this problem of connectedness, we are not just flowing, things are not just um, getting, we are not getting along as supposed to be. Well, the root issue of this feeling of di being disconnected from one another is the problem of intimacy. Mm. And I need to let us know that there are a number of reasons that intimacy may also decline. Some of them are subtle. Some of them are inconspicuous. Some of them are harmless. Some of them are really obvious. And uh, it's like, if we don't do something about it, it gets bigger and bigger. And at the end of the day, the couple that are meant to be one, they keep, they keep getting themselves separated from one another. And uh, sometimes some people even use lack of intimacy as a payback, you know, when there is issue, even between them. Once in intimacy begins to wane, for whatever reason, it can become hard to get back on track, except the Lord helps a person. So one thing I will let us understand is that intimacy is a multifaceted thing. It's a multifaceted thing. And I'm trusting that maybe I'll be able to mention them um, as we go on so that we will have body even for our homes and we'll be able to get it restored no matter for how long it has been having issues in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, when we're talking about this intimacy, like I said, there are different types. But the one that is the foundational one is the spiritual intimacy. And the foundational one is the spiritual intimacy. And this spiritual intimacy is the bedrock of all the other types of intimacy. When this one is there, other ones will have a firm footing. Okay. I was okay. saying that marriage is of God. Marriage is of God. 
uh, it is his idea. If it is to work, married couples must hook up to him in genuine fellowship and total surrender. If we will not have anything to do with God, I, I don't see how we can have intimacy as we really desire it, even in marriage. So it means we need to yield to the dictates and demands of the Lord. And that is being in a position of total submission, even unto God. You know, the Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 7, that therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. When we submit to God, we will be able to resist the devil, and he will flee even from us. So we need to submit individually. We need to submit as a couple because marriage is of God. So we must keep returning to him, and he's the one that will help us. Let me just mention certain things that will help this spiritual intimacy. Because I have seen couples who got married in church, who met as Christians, and yet they still have issues. We do not get married and suddenly stop living as Christians. In fact, the Bible says two are better than one. That means marriage is supposed to make us better. Everything that we will be experiencing in marriage should be better than what they were when we were still single individually. For those who married in the Lord, they must have been living holy lives. They must have been living as children of God. And that means they are staying away from sin and everything that can provoke us anger. So when we got, get married, we must continue to live holy because holiness attracts God. Sinfulness repels him. So as individuals, live holy. As a couple, live holy. The Bible says God has purer eyes than to behold evil. He cannot look on iniquity. So when we make up our minds as individuals and then as a couple to be obedient even unto God, we will discover that God will be on our side. And everything we want to do will be to make him happy even with us. So when we live holy life, you live holy life for yourself. Mm. husband and wife you live holy life for your partner you live holy life for your family even jesus said for their sake i sanctify myself and i was wondering does jesus need to sanctify himself but he said he did it for us so for us for me i i need to live holy for myself live holy for my husband live holy for my family because now it's no longer me we are now joined together so there are things that we will do as husband as a husband or as a wife for the sake of your family and that entails all your dealings with your spouse and your children they must be pleasing to the lord they must be pleasing to the lord so spiritual intimacy comes from being in the word of god together because the two of you must know what you are living from and what you are pursuing the word of god in a situation where we have a relationship where the word of God has come low, our own words have come up. You keep hearing your husband, you keep hearing your wife, we are no longer hearing God. Mm. It will win with time. Then it must come from being, I mean, from praying for one another. We must continue to pray for one another. We must also learn how to worship together. I hope we are. Uh, mind in mind, together, together, together. Because yeah, we must see. be deliberate and intentional mm. about that. You know, when we were still single, you do things on your own. You love praying for by yourself and for yourself. You may be praying for your partner, but you are doing it alone. In the situation where you get married and you want intimacy to grow, we must also learn, mind my word, learn how to do it together. It may not be something that you are used to, but we need to do it together. Because the word of God will nourish us. When we are on the same spiritual diet, we will be expecting ourselves to grow in a similar way. We will be growing together, not separately. There are people who want to really be intimate, but they are growing separately. In fact, they, they used to compete with one another in their growth with the word of God. And that is, God didn't call us to compete with one another. He calls us together to complement, to complete one another. 
So it is not a matter of competition. So it's something that we need to do deliberately, grow in the word of God. We must be ardent Bible students. So the two of us must be have a, raise a family where we can study the word of God, seek the word of God, share it, and then do it. So we teach it to our specials, and then we teach our children as they keep coming in. Well, in this situation, I must say that husbands must take the lead in this place because that is where his honor lies. Unfortunately, we have families now where the men are out there looking for money, not to be a spiritual head as they're supposed to be in the home. And if it is with money, you are having your superiority or whatever in the home, it doesn't last. It is the spiritual life that gives you the authority in the home. So I dare to say that the husband will take the lead in this regard. Show them in your family the way of the Lord. And you can only give what you have. So you also must be an ardent student of the word of God. And husbands must be steer themselves in this regard. Anyway, if as a wife, if your husband is not doing this, then work on it and pray. I have an experience along this line. I incidentally we started the church before we got married. We got engaged, and then the church was to start the same year under the uh, supervision and leadership of our spiritual parents, and then it started. But I noticed that my husband will preach and uh, he will say correct things. Like all these like family that pray together, they stay together, he will preach, he will say many things. I will be happy thinking that at least now in our home, some things we take shape. He can pray for hours. He taught me how to pray for many hours while we were still putting. It wasn't easy for me because I didn't grow up like that. But it was grooming me. And I was willing to learn. But when we now get into the house, okay, let's wake up in the morning. Let's pray together like family, devotion. Especially when we started having some people living with us. But he will not do it. And I grew up from a Baptist background. At home, my father would call us together. He would do the family devotion. So I was expecting that my husband would do the same thing that my father did. But my husband didn't look in any way like my father at all. Because I thought I would marry somebody like my father. But lo and behold, hey, it's completely different. I had this family background of being called together for family devotion in the morning. I have this uh, background of being raised in the Baptist church where they have programs for every age bracket as they were growing. My husband did not have that kind of when I was I started working before I met him, I went for children evangelism ministry training. I had Bible club. In fact, the day he was going to propose to me, he waited till I finished my Bible club that day. So before he proposed. So I had Bible club. I was dealing with the children. So there was I I had that background. I didn't quickly notice the difference when we were still two. No problem. We were praying together. But when we started having people living with us, ah, he will not call us together like my father used to do. And I felt this is not right. Because we have individual prayer life. We have the couple's own, but now family. So it was having, I was having a problem. But I sought for counsel. And from our mothers in the Lord where I went to, one of them told me, he said, Ibibogolatin kuadiyale. That is, it is everywhere we gather chickens in the evening. <laughs> what I want meant to me is that it's not what is happening to me is not strange. And I say, eh, you mean you went through this too? She said, yes. So, so how did you overcome? She now told me that you see, my husband is the pastor of everybody outside. Therefore, in this house, I am the pastor in this house. She encouraged me to brace up myself and use my past experience to gather people together in the home and start leading. That in not too long a time, I will discover that he will join us. Hmm. I went to another moon. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and that one told me that, he said, hmm, Bola, if you can pray, you will enter rest. If you can pray, you will enter rest. 
We mm. actually in those days used to go for family retreats with one of our uh, those who are having spiritual oversight. And I remember that time that one of them asked, after asking for so many things about the ministry and everything, I said, how is the home? Before I said anything, my husband just said, ah, is, uh, she's enjoying. And certainly she wants to say something in the area of family devotion. <laughs> so I kept quiet. He now said, and what she does not know, and what she doesn't know is that each time she does it, I admire her because I don't have her patience with all those people in the house and those children. Then a, a, a scenario flashed, you know, in my mind. I remember one time we were having devotion like that, he joined us. Then one of the children just said, hmm, will Jesus give us biscuits? Ah, when my husband heard that one, he said, will you keep quiet? We are talking of serious things, we are talking of uh, biscuits. <laughs> Then the child evangelist in me rose. And I told that child, I said, Jesus will give us biscuits. In fact, he will give us more than biscuits. He will give us some other good things. What else can he give us? All of them started shouting. He will give us sweets. He will give us chocolate. He will give us, I say yes. But before he gives us, he is saying we should do this. That was how we came back even to the teaching. So that memory flashed as we were talking to our spiritual leaders that time. And I felt bad. And what dawned on me at that time is I was asking him to do what he never went through. He didn't have such a background. He didn't grow up in the home, the type of home I grew up from. So he didn't have such an experience. I now, it dawned on me that I had my own so that I can be a help to him. So where he is deficient, I will now supply what I have. So from that day, I made up my mind that I will return back home. I will big bridge the gap and we keep praying for him until he will now see it and that was exactly what happened and he kept joining us he kept joining us and uh, after some time he took over in fact when he took over it became a matter anytime i wanted to say anything i would need to raise up my hand sometimes he would say not today sometimes he would call me until he took he took charge of what is supposed to be so i want to encourage all of us that in case there is something that you are well versed in. You know how to, don't let it be a reason to separate you. You still must be intimate. You don't only need wisdom and help in the place of prayer to still keep doing it until the owner takes his, his rightful position. And uh, it, it has helped me. So I, I stood in the gap. In fact, it's, it, even in the church, it will be a surprise. I remember one time, he asked for the attendance in those early days. And I told him we were 16. He said, 16, where did you see 16? And I said, um, we have nine adults and so so number of children. He said, will you give me the attendance? Who is talking about children? So I said, ah, I didn't know human beings. So it now dawned on me that all my own exposure to children evangelism ministry, to youth ministry, it is for such a time like this okay. that it will be ne ne needed. So with time, with patience, and then bridging the, I mean, bridging the gap, filling the gap, he, we, we kept doing it together until a time came when he took it over. And then he would be interested in who is teaching the children, what are the youth saying, and whatever, until I let go and he took charge. So I am encouraging us that we should not let these differences even make us to separate. It should still make us, we can still get more. I mean, more closer, even to one another, even with such differences. God will help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Intensity of prayer, keep praying. We keep praying together as a couple. We keep studying the word of God together, worshiping God. Then cultivating the fruit of the Spirit, it will help our spiritual intimacy. I think I said so much for spiritual intimacy, except maybe you have more questions, but this is the basic for it. Do yeah, I need to mention other types of intimacies at this point? Uh, yes, I I think you should just you should just go ahead. I, I think people are already picking um <laughs> they are picking lessons from from these because there's always that thing that we feel like very hard to know. Jebe is the is the head of the house, mm. so he's the one that should always be in front. 
you know so um we are to get we are together not to compete but to complement yeah, where the other yeah. is weak you mm -hmm. may be strong so when you step in mm -hmm. you are not crossing your boundary because naturally we expect daddy to always be the one leading uh devotions in the home yeah. but if mommy is stepping yeah. in is it's not as if she's crossing her boundary but she's she actually also does prayerfully spray she does it prayerfully expecting that the owner will still come and take his rightful place mm. so that was what happened wow i i, I really <laughs> i really love that and god showed mercy Amen. All right, Auntie, let me just allow you to go on with the other Amen. types of intimacy so that it can flow. Okay. Okay, let me just mention one or two things. Still on that spiritual, we must have regular fasting time together. Regular mm. fasting time beyond prayers. Married couple must engage in fasting because there are certain breakthroughs that can only be actualized when the two are combined you know jesus said this kind go ahead not out except by prayer and fasting so there are times that i you, you a woman may be fasting the husband may be eating a woman may be having a vigil and the husband will be busy snoring and it can be vice versa there is a reason for so many things because it depends on what you have seen and what the two of you are going in for then the cultivation of fruit of the spirit. In marriage, we know add it was actually mm -hmm. fruit of the spirit. It is the home that is the examination ground, examination hall for fruit of the spirit. So as we are growing as Christians, we need to grow because this is what will show the character of God in us. That it and uh, we need to uphold these godly values as you see them in Galatians chapter 5. So we cannot buy it in the market. And there are many, many things that will challenge all this fruit of the Spirit in us. It will challenge whether you are gentle, are you really gentle? It will challenge whether you are full of long suffering or you are patient. Oh, I write many exams on a daily basis concerning that. And I know my husband is also writing his own. We, it's an ongoing examination that is wow. making us to be better better on a daily basis so when i see any woman either fighting or arguing outside i'll just know that that person will be struggling with submission in the home so i know that uh, uh, you you may have been so used to lifting your voice but if for the fruit of the spirit to develop in you you need to stay in the word of god we need to wait on the lord we need to fellowship together then we create room for retreats where we can really open up onto one another and uh, withdraw from the hustling bustling in order for us to be able to wait on the Lord and renew our strength. When you have children, family conference is also very, very important. You listen to your children. You listen to what they have to say. And uh, even when they are speaking the truth out of their minds, no offense. Because that's how they feel. I I remember when one of our children was telling me, if I say this one now, mommy will shout. I felt like saying, do you talk to mommy like that? But the Holy Spirit restrained me. And I said, do I shout? Ah, that's all you don't know. Then they did drama of how I behave in the house. So if there were not to be a family conference, I would think I am okay. Because mm. outside people will say, oh, Sister Bola is very quiet. But if you ask my children, they will say, oh, who is quiet? They will tell you the scenarios that normally take place, even in the house. God will help us in Jesus' name. I need to also say this, that we should grow in hearing the God as husband and wife. It will help the wife to help the husband. Because you will not be able to support, you will not be able to help if you are not hearing God. And as husband, if you are not hearing God, leadership role will be a struggle. And then you will not be able to lead the family even to where they are supposed to go. There are many examples of this in the Bible. And all these are still showing us about the spiritual intimacy. Spiritual intimacy. Because I keep wondering, 
how how Elizabeth knew that the name of the son will be John, and they are not discussed. It showed that they have a work with God individually. They were both devout. They were both righteous. So we need such testimony. And when we hear God, it makes the work easy. For instance, maybe it's Abraham that has been hearing God that he will have a child. Sarah never had such an encounter. That may, that may be the reason why she suggested that the husband should go into Agar. But the day the Lord visited them, and God said, where is Sarah, your wife? And she laughed when God said she would have a child. I'm sure it's a real deep encounter because she laughed in the house, in the tent. And they were sitting outside and God still knew. It was like, oh, did he see me? How did he know? It's a worthy encounter for her. And she was told that she was going to have a son. When she had God, the Bible says she received strength to conceive. So it's a dangerous thing if we are not hearing God as husband and wife. We cannot really be intimate. Abraham remained barren for as long as Sarah did not hear God. So you may have lofty ideas, you may have lofty visions that you want to pursue. If your wife is not hearing God, she will not support you. She can be a passive follower, but she will, you will not have a whole submission, throwing all herself to support you. And that might not be good, even for us. So these are the foundation that we lay for ourselves as we grow in spiritual intimacy. Maybe later on, other examples can come for us to know that we need to come together. And we must maintain this, our relationship with God. We cannot afford to to hold, to be a grudge, to keep having grudge. <laughs> so we must be ready to forgive one another. <laughs> I remember I was telling some group of women recently that let me first say it in Yoruba. Even when I'm not at fault, I still beg. I mm. ask, I beg because I want peace in the home. Wow. Because I want togetherness in the home. Because peace can be stolen by the enemy. He has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He has come to steal our joy, come to steal our peace, come to steal our togetherness, our oneness, our being, you know, living in unity. If you allow the devil, when the hedge is broken, he comes in to steal. When he finishes stealing, he goes ahead to kill it. After that one, he comes to destroy it. I have one experience even allow around this area too. I went to preach somewhere. No, I mean far from our house. That was the time when this cell phone, you know, just newly came. So there was no network where I went. So I left the phone at home. Even in the phone, I had to put it somewhere where it would really receive network. So when I came back home and my husband called, he wasn't around. He said, Where were you? You know the way the way he he, he, he said it. I, I said struggle. And I felt, uh, I thought that the said absence makes the heart grow fonder. Mm. He wasn't seeing me, seeing the way he was <laughs> greeting me. And then he just, the, the line went off. I asked myself, did he hang up on me? <laughs> did he, was there no network where he was? I have a choice. There were two options before me. And that's where we need to be working with God. Mm. Whichever way I follow, we determine my response to him. So I chose to believe that maybe the network, the network. was fault. I didn't want to agree that he hung up on me. Because if I said that, there are other behaviors that we go in line with that. And I wanted peace in the home. So when I started praying again, I was asking God, what happened? What is what minute this? I went to do your work, there was no problem. Then the Holy Spirit whispered to me. He said, it is a symptom. He said, it is a symptom. I said, symptom. So I started meditating on symptom. And it dawned on me that before any sickness comes up fully blown, there must have been symptoms. So I said, it was like if God is saying there is something great that is come. This one that you are saying is not it. So you need to deal with this symptom before it becomes big. So I now said, what is it? What is it? He said, warmth, lack of warmth, warmth. I said, eh, uh -uh. Wow. so warmth, 
Ah, wow. So as I was thinking, warmth. Then the Holy Spirit said, affection. Oh, I said, oh, no, we are, how did he get out of this house? Saturday praying. The affection. <laughs> the Bible says, two are better than one. He said, when they lie together, they are warm together. I said, so what happens? That affection is dissipating. Holy Spirit, wherever it has gone, please bring it back. Because I know that the Bible also says that we should pursue peace. He said, before peace leaves our home, he said, we should pursue peace. Because some people, peace will be leaving their bedroom. They will be watching it. He gets into the sitting room. They won't do anything about it until he leaves the compound, until he leaves the town, until he leaves the state. Wow. Well, I have Psalm 34, verse 14. Psalm 34, 14 says, Depart from me, bro. Do good, seek peace, and pursue it. So we have a responsibility to pursue peace and let it not go. So as I was praying, I said, Lord, peace must return. Affection must be restored in the name of Jesus. I don't care how it is happened, but Lord, let it be restored. The following day, I had to go for the meeting again, and I went. By the time I came back, the children, they were jumping. They said, Mommy, welcome. Daddy has called. He said, he's missing you. If you are not missing him, to them it was a song. To me, it was an answer prayer. So when I called him again, he just started talking. How was the meeting you went for? How is home? How is everybody? I see if nothing happened. Whereas if I had told the second line the previous day, I'm sure that's not how we will be talking together. So any head that is broken, rise up to bridge it. If the head is broken, the Bible says the serpent will bite. And the devil, that's what he's seeking for. He has come to steal, to kill. When you are fighting for your right and say, did he not, was he not the one that started it? Why did he greet me like that? Why didn't he ask me the reason why he did not? When you are proving a point like that, you are giving the devil energy. And he's ready even to scatter this institution of God. So we all have rules to play. Sometimes when my husband has offended me, I wait for him to apologize. When he doesn't apologize, I apologize. When I apologize, he will be wondering why. I know what I'm seeking for. I don't want the enemy even to come in. So when we are talking of being one or this intimacy, the two of us must be ready to work it out. And it's not something I'll say, I did it yesterday, you are to do this today. No, that's not it. If Jesus waits for us to be doing all this, <laughs> we will not even amount to anything in his sight. Is seeking that we will be one. If we don't seek for him, he seeks for us. And he is the example that we are following. And that's one of the ways by which we can do that. So please ensure that you maintain this ritual intimacy in your own home. Each of us will work it out. Incidentally, we have not thought this way before. We have not lived, I mean, as married people before. So we are learning on the job. So we need constant help of the Holy Spirit, even for us to really be intimate when you see something wrong in the other and i'm saying this for both partners because i am a woman my husband is not here maybe he would have put in his own effort from his own angle but i can only say of my own and anyone i notice even in his own part and anyone i've seen in another people's part for instance we i was told to settle a quarrel for a couple with a pastor in the church so we started with the man. And as we were talking to the man, this pastor that joined me now spoke to the man. He said, you see, even if your wife does not apologize to you or is doing something that and is misbehaving, you as a husband should rise up and be the head. He said, as you are looking at me, you see my wife, I have prostrated for her before. Eh? Even me, I said, eh. <laughs> the other man too said, eh. So we were looking at him. He said, his own wife, when he will offend her, she will not say anything until Sunday morning. He's on Sunday morning, she will not pack together all his offenses in the week and come and present it to him on Sunday morning when he, she knew that he was going to preach. He said, ah, he will look at the message he wanted to go and preach. He will look at the way he said it will be turned into truth. What will he do now? He said, in time past, he will just use bold face and just leave the house and go out. And go and preach the message. You can imagine 
what kind of message it will be void of power there will be words though that will be said but the presence of god that would have followed him will not be as it was supposed to be he said but this particular day he was begging god he said god please send me to touch the heart of my wife you said the heart of a king is in the hand of the lord do something to this woman and rather than the holy spirit to appeal to the appeal to the woman the holy spirit just said prostrate for her beg her he said if he had not been used to hearing the holy spirit he would say ah, ah this should be the death ah, prostrate and the holy spirit you know he kept saying it and he will not strive with us you know the holy spirit will not be striving with us he said in obedience to what the holy spirit said he said he did it he must say ah, he said is it written on my forehead if i didn't tell you will you know is she not my wife he said i prostrated he said he did not know what that did to her as soon as he lay down on the floor the woman also knelt down broke down started crying so they held one another begged one another prayed for one another forgave one another he said look at my wife today she eat the man said look at my wife today so sometimes some things that you are seeing that looks as if oh this intimacy is wow you don't know what has gone be behind wow. it it may be the sacrifice of the wife it may be the sacrifice of the husband just to ensure that oneness is a pursuit and something that it, that is achieved so each party will work at it today it may be the man tomorrow it may be the woman all that we are saying is no thoroughfare for the devil in this world wow. and when we have such a heart and we are working at it it will become something that we will achieve god will help us in the name of the lord jesus Amen. the reason why i say spiritual intimacy is the bedrock is because if the wife is misbehaving or the husband is misbehaving in the presence of god when they are seeking god god will correct them god will let them know what they are doing my husband we you know I, I i tell people that my husband when he wants to kill mosquito he can carry machine gun in words you know how machine gun will scatter the ant and scatter the whole floor it will kill the mosquito but it will cause other havoc that's how my husband will speak when he speaks like that words that i will use to respond will be welling up within me <laughs> when it gets to my mouth mm, i hold my mouth and swallow it you know i will i will think if you offend not in words so i will keep quiet but inside mm. me i will see the boy mm. when people look at me they will say the sister is quiet but when god looks at me that's not god's but it's concerning my life yeah, yeah. so when i come to the presence of the lord in my quiet time he will come and say you are an angry woman <laughs> anger rests in the bosom of fools wow you are still an angry woman on earth they are calling me quiet sister in heaven my name is foolish woman so i will be begging god i will be crying sometimes i will say god am i the only one you are talking to you should also talk to this man god will say you you are an angry woman an anger is in the bosom of fools so i needed to work on myself i needed to know how to deal with anger i needed to know how to respond in such a situation and responding like that i am getting helped response the way god wants me to respond i'm helping my family he's also uh, helping the relationship so i started crying out for help that i don't even want anything that people will say to me to affect me again help me as such that i will not harbor anything within me neither will i respond like jesus will not do so i started looking at jesus as my author and finisher of my faith so i will what he will not do i will not do it what he will not say i will not say i discovered later on that even my responding like that god was using it to preach to my husband one day he was sharing with somebody he said god will say look at your wife eh did he answer did she answer did she say anything and god is using that was also breaking and in fact when you want to fight with somebody and the person is not fighting will you not bottle up whatever you want to do <laughs> so before you know what's happening the devil is kept at day and then the intimacy you know goes on several things like that have happened that we need to work out but i as i have said if you do not dwell on the word of god there will not be any help in the day of calamity 
Mm-hmm. When the enemy will come like a flood, the, stand, the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard of the Word of God. So the Word of God must be in us. That's what we help. Challenges will come. We will surprise one another. In fact, when you respond or your husband, my husband respond like this, I will be like, ah, ah. In those early days, I will say, have I not made a mistake? It is the word that God gave me in the beginning that will come again and say, no, I am in this, in this with God. <laughs> because situations and circumstances come and challenge you. By whose authority are you coming into this relationship? They did it for Jesus. In those days, when you don't have anything to say, to defend, to defend the home that God has committed into our hands, we will only be blaming the devil. We are us, we are the ones that are letting down guys. So I'm praying that God will help us even to be able to walk worthy of the call, even into this marriage. So he will be able to use us for the children and use us to teach other family members. So you can't joke with the word of God. You can't joke with prayers. You cannot joke with hearing him. Because as we hear him, that we will be able to do what he's asking us to do. So we must create time to pray together. I've talked about three levels of prayer now. Personal, individual, then couple, couples devotion, then family, family devotion. God will help us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Auntie. Before you move to the next point, wow, I, I think... Um, <laughs> I mean, this this is 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 so loaded. It's so loaded. I, I know there's somebody out there. Why you said, um, "Have I not made a mistake?" I, I've seen, I've sat mm. with couples. Several of them, we always say, "Have I not made a mistake?" And I'll tell them that hundred mm. percent of, I mean, couples, we always feel at a point as if they made a mistake. Did I really hear God? Yes, you heard God. Mm. But then, if the Bible can say in Philippians 2.12 that walk out your salvation with fear and okay. trembling. That is even the salvation that the Lord Jesus Christ gave to us. How much more your marriage? Mm. We all need to keep marriage. walking out, yeah. walking out our marriages with fear. And we trembling just like salvation. I, I, I mean, that's why I mean I'm I'm learning so much from what you have said. Prayer changes a lot of things. The things that you should actually argue about, pray about it, yeah. and go we undo it. And then when we make the word of God always guide all our movements, you know, it it just changes everything. And that scripture in Psalm 34, verse, uh, verse 14 that you quoted, is as if I've never seen that scripture before. I know the Bible says, follow mm-hmm. peace with all men. You know? But this one says that, mm-hmm. seek peace. In fact, pursue it. Run after it. It's not a matter of just try to you pursue it. Go after, go after it. Oh. I mean, with everything in us. Mm-hmm. So, thank you so much, Auntie. Um mm-hmm. For, for that, I, I want you to dwell more on the um, affection side. You spoke about affection. Okay. Um, okay. When, yes. when, when, um, what are those things that could make affection to start um, jumping out of um, of my of of marriages or unions? What makes it jump out of the window? And suddenly we just start looking at ourselves like strangers. Um, how can couples keep cultivating it? And then, of course, I, I want you to now bring maybe the the aspect of um, sexual intimacy um, in, in along with this okay. summer. Okay, maybe I'll should just uh, run through the types of intimacy and then we now dwell on those two that you have mentioned oh, okay we have that. what we call recreation recreational intimacy recreational intimacy which is also like part of the physical intimacy recreational intimacy we have intellectual intimacy recreational intimacy is the bond that we create and strengthen by doing activities together doing activities together 
we can they can we can be playing together uh, i mean like isaac was doing with his wife that a king even saw that made him to know that his husband and wife is part of our intimacy doing things together um how i would like to say it now play together uh it's this recreational aspect of it that we can do together god has given us to one another to enjoy life activity even together we can try things together come out of compost room relate together and then we'll be able to uh, learn things from one another laugh together play together you know so that you can endure times together times of tears times of toil there may be more even to say so that you have things to even leave your memories because yeah. there may be time that you won't have much of that time together then the intellectual intimacy that one has to do with discussing communicating issues that you know connect us together some topics can be favorite things that we share together so for some it can be politics for some it can even be football for some it can be something that interests the other i remember one time when i was talking with the, one of our mommies in the lord he said she said her husband is always mathematics mathematics you know this mathematics he said you will not hey, you know you will not be able to discuss with him they said issue mathematics mommy said she had to go and enroll for remedial mathematics so that she will have homework and assignment so that she can discuss with the husband so when she comes home with the assignment and homework it's not as if she needs any certificate but she's making efforts to see that she also gets interested in what the husband gets interested in and then they have basis for discussing because it's like it has consumed the man with passion and you can she will be asking you you know where you're talking say, but when it now comes up with ah, this uh, assignment this is what my teacher gave me he say hey, ah, he will leave everything he's doing he will not give attention to explain to him to to you know i remember you know my husband loves swimming mm. i don't like swimming <laughs> all the children in the house they like swimming he even makes joke that when they put me inside sicko i'm likely to jump that's how much i don't <laughs> i said i don't want to expose myself he bought me all the costumes that could make me comfortable even with swimming still i was still having issues i said people are around there is this one is open so one time we now went to i think it was aqua even together we now went on a visit to a family that have private private uh, swimming pool very important i said he said he's going to he's going to swim i said i don't have costume the woman of the house went to bring <laughs> costume for me to, to put on so i didn't have any excuse so i entered the water i saw another side of my husband so gentle he was saying you do like this don't worry don't rush you will do like this he was training me teaching me so i saw that he really desired that i would do it he was very patient teaching me because he wanted me to be interested in what he was passionate about he was so happy he said they should take my photograph, send it to children, that mommy has entered order, you know, that kind of thing. So he was telling me so many technologies and things that, ah, uh ah. -uh. So we have basis. So there are some of us too. When you discover that there is a passion in one thing that the other person has been consumed with, let's make efforts. We can make efforts to, somebody may be watching movie. You can sit by the uh, legs of that person eating uh, what is it on ground not together tell him or tell her to tell you what is going on so that the two of you will be in one another's world that is how we can correct one another we can put a stop where excesses are coming in but when you don't know anything about what the other person you will not just understand the reason why he's doing like that some people it may be politics some people it may be many things that not necessarily by them, that because we are social beings so that we are getting interested and then some of them are born out of background something that they have been so used to something that they are they have been exposed to you can't cut or a one another off suddenly even from such a, 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 a entanglement until you start building 
your own together. So we need this. So it will make us to be able to discuss. We laugh, we play, even with one another. God will help us in Jesus' name, intellectually and seamlessly. Then there is the emotional one, emotional intimacy. Emotional intimacy is sharing one's own experiences with one another. One experiences with one another. It's possible for <laughs> a woman, you know, to dominate in this one. And men may, may be much more limited in this aspect. Eh. But then the... The, the men we tend to because a woman we tend to be comfortable when there are emotive speech when there is emotive speech some people will not know how to express themselves you know when i was still a non-believer i used to read all these romantic novels i used mills and bone in those days i used to see how they would say there is a chemistry between a man and a woman they will describe everything except sexual intercourse. But they will describe how they get excited about one another. So when I got born again, and they will announce that people are engaged in the fellowship, I'll be looking out for such chemistry <laughs> between them, maybe something that will be visible that I will see. I will be looking for excitement, and I will not see it. And you know, we grew up to dialogue with the Holy Spirit at that time. I'll be saying, these people are too cold for my liking, or too cold for comfort. But it's like those unbelievers are excited, even in their relationship, more than ours. Then Holy Spirit answered me one day. He said, everything that I see that the devil does is a counterfeit. He said, for every counterfeit, there is an original. Yeah. Ah, it, it, it comforts my soul. I said, so... All these things too, I will experience and enjoy in marriage. Only that my own will be legitimate and approved by God. I will not need to be running after the counterfeit that the enemy is you know, using to distract. So it gave me, put my mind at rest. That at least when I will see the person that God, that God will give me, it will be worth it. And it was like that. Because wow. my husband has literary mind. He will use every 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 letter of my name to form, you know, a, a poem. And these poems are scriptural, scriptural. I mean, are scriptures. As my name is Adebola, A D E B O L A. He will. Oh, that's when I knew that Sons of Solomon is full of full of love poems. <laughs> Many of these he will bring them out. He will describe. He will do all this. And a woman is moved by what she hears. Mm. Whether good or bad, a woman is moved by what she hears because male and female created it then. We mm. cannot look away from this. Understanding the basic characteristics, the differences between a male and a female will help us in, a, in the pursuit of our intimacy because it's one of the bedrocks of why God says we should be one. In Genesis 2, when Adam opened his eyes, he says, This is the bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And he said, for this cause, for the reason of being born of one bone, flesh of one another, they should be one. But when you go to Matthew 19, and they were asking Jesus, should we put away our wives for every any reason? He said, how do you read the Bible? Mm. How do you, have you not read that he who made them in the beginning, made them male yeah. and female? Yeah. He says, this reason, for the reason of male and female, you will leave, the man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Yes, so we need the understanding of this. We will not be one. Intimacy will be like a mirage until we have understanding. What mm -hmm. a female will look for will be different from what a male will look for because they are not made in the same way. Yet God still wants them to be one. A woman is moved by what she hears. So emotionally, we should not damage the emotions of a woman. We mm -hmm. should ensure that the uh, emotive speech, speeches that they will be hearing will be the one that will boost their morale. So you don't just say things. And you say, we don't get there overnight. A man that yeah. is not well versed in that one, he will still be saying it until he is helped. A woman too will hear that until she is also helped. These are stages that we need to go through, especially in, in, uh, 
when we have our teething stage, you know, when we just get married, there are teething problems that we have. It will look as say, ah, everything should just even finish. Let me go out. Mm -mm. It's, you will be cracking bones later. So you endure the pain of the teething. <laughs> you will go through it when you begin to shine your white teeth. Everybody will like it. But certain things have gone in, even behind that. So there are some things that will prove, bring out your character or patience and whatever. But a man should learn that because a woman is also, one woman is different from another. Some women, they are, they have sound mind. They are stable. When you throw any word at them, they can shake it up. But some, it, it will crumble and it can affect them emotionally. So we need the understanding of this as men in order for us to know what we say even to our women. But a woman needs to hear, a woman needs to be affirmed, a woman needs to understand that she is still being appreciated even by the man. What a man, a man's emotion is not based on what he hears. A man's emotion is based on what he sees. What he sees, because maybe men are moved by what they are saying. And that's one of the reasons why we need to work on ourselves. Well, let me talk about physical intimacy, which is also another type of intimacy. Okay. And this one is approved by God. It's legitimate in marriage. This is the kind of thing that when you get involved in, a day before your wedding, it is a sin. And when you get involved in it on the day of your wedding, after your wedding, it is legitimate. Even God will smile at you. Wow. Because the difference is time. You do it when God has approved of it. You don't go and steal yourself into it when it will not be approved by God. God also in the Bible says that they should enjoy themselves. So physical intimacy is approved by God. Is the domain when uh, when many people, when you talk of intimacy, that's, that's what normally comes to people's mind because they feel that it has to be you know, physical intimacy, maybe sexual or, or whatever. There are some non-sexual physical intimacy, non-sexual physical intimacy, such as holding of hands, such as um, hugs, such as uh, cuddling on what I mean, on the couch with one another. They are non-sexual intimacy, even though it can lead to sexual intimacy if in uh, the sexual activity. But it doesn't always have to. It doesn't always have to. And it should not be absent because it affirms. It ensures, you know, it gives confidence. When you just give somebody a hug, when you hug one another, when you hold one another, when you cuddle up, even you don't one another. All these ones, they are, they, they are the type of intimacy and it pays a great dividend even for, for the men. So we need to know that this physical intimacy is one of the things that God says you should enjoy. For instance, in Proverbs chapter 5, Proverbs chapter 5. The Bible also makes us to understand that we are to enjoy one another. I was even very surprised when God was mentioning certain parts of the body. I would say, ah, is this in the Bible? Am I reading the storybook or am I still reading uh, uh, the, Bible? the Bible? And I discovered I still read the Bible. Uh, Proverbs chapter 5. Let me see if where I can begin from verse 18. It says, let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. Let her be as a loving hind and a pleasant robe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times and be thou ravished always with her love. This is Bible. In fact, sir, one day we were reading different versions. There is one Bible in our house. I, I don't know whether it's 52 translations. And we were reading it and we read uh, one version that says that let our press give you a, 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 a rapture experience, you know? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, that be transported with delight in her love. Meaning, he one says, be intoxicated always mm -hmm. in her love. These are things that we see as this is provision of God, but it is in marriage that we are supposed to enjoy one another. He said, never take our love for granted. Be captured by her love. Mm. Be intoxicated with her love. Be ravished. These are the words that are used by the Bible. He said, let her embrace intoxicate you. You see, so it is not as if 
God does not want us even to enjoy one another. And that verse 18 is saying that let's be happy with the wife you married when you were young. He said, let a fountain be blessed and enjoy the girl you married when you were young. So God expects us to enjoy one another. Sexual intimacy is also talked about in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7. In this place, the Bible says in verse 3, in verse 3, it says, Let the wife, husband, render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. It is due benevolence. The wife does not have power over her own body, but the husband, the same thing with the husband, not no power over his own body, but the wife. And look at that verse 5. In my own King James Version, the first word it uses is defraud, defraud ye not. Defraud is a word that is like, um, eh? Well, how would I describe it? It's, it's a word that is, is a... It's a, it's it's a crime. It's a fraud. <laughs> It's you have committed a crime. It's a criminal. It's a criminal offense for you to defraud one another, either husband or wife. When you look at Bible and read it like that, you will fear God, and you will not be caught for once that mm. defrauding one another. Of course, certain things may make us to defraud one another, especially with women when there is an offense. Because for a man, sexual intercourse, he doesn't have to be a hard thing deep 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 thing once he sees something that can arouse he gets aroused a woman is not moved like, like that like that so this understanding of male and female we also help our physical intimacy because a man can just look at his wife and be aroused and feel let's let's have one round and the woman will, what what is it for me now 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 <laughs> let's talk Let's talk. There are so many serious things to say. Because the point of release for a man is sex. The point of release for a woman is talking. Is talking. So mm. when a man is going to have all of his wife, my husband will say, download your wife. Download her. What happened today? Let her be talking. Let her be talking. Be punctuating it with, mm, ah, ah, okay. Let her finish saying all that she has to say. When she has finished saying all she has to say, there is nothing more. Ask for anything she will give you. But if you don't give her a yeah, yeah. there are so many things bottled up. She will not be totally released for anything that you are requesting. Mm -hmm. You may even be playing with her as she's talking, showing that you are interested. Allow her to talk. So many women have bottled up so many things, grudges, offenses, even information. They just want to inform. They just want to talk. Because he who made them in the beginning made them male and female. But when a man is not given to being a friend of his wife, being a good listener to her sense and her nonsense, listen to her sense and her nonsense. At least you will know her level. Let her talk. Then you have all of her. Mm -hmm. That's what I say. I say to women too, if you want to have all of your husband, allow him. Give him super sex. Mm. Ask for anything. He will give it to you. That's what all those uh, daddies, sugar daddies and all those Aristotle daddies, they do to all these girls. When those girls satisfy them sexually, they can sign any check. They mm. can transfer any amount of money. And mm. this is the area where the devil stays to come and cheat us as Christians. Mm. We are giving to one another. Your husband is the only person you can sleep to. With and you will not be guilty before God. Your wife is the only one you can sleep with, and you will not be guilty before God. So why don't you enjoy one another? I'm even asking myself, there is no marriage in heaven. Except the one that we are planning to go and have with the Lord Jesus. May he count us worthy. So if God has given us all these wonderful provisions here or now, should we not enjoy one another? Should we allow the devil to sow, you know, a discord even between us? And we need to understand you are not the owner of your body. Even the Bible says when you refrain yourself from one another, it shouldn't be long. It should be because you are fast and it should be with consent. I learned that one. Hmm. I had to learn it. I didn't know before. So when I will be fasting, we'll be fasting. And my husband will ask for, you know, 
for us to have sexual intercourse and say, ha, and we are fasting. Ah, I will stop that fast to go and start another time because we have had sexual intercourse. Until I search for cancer again, <laughs> he is always spoiling my fasting with uh, yeah. this canal <laughs> thing, canal thing. Until I was told that it is not canal. It is really, really spiritual. That, in fact, it's a tool that we can use to enhance our oneness and our intimacy in the place of prayer. But because we do not know, we use it as a payback, the, the, defrauding one another as a payback thing. But I was taught by those who have gone ahead that, no, you don't do such a thing. A man, we may not be totally released when he is denied sexual intercourse. Some of them will not be able to think straight. Some of them will not be able to take decisions and the uh, steps that are correct because they are being denied. Just as a woman who is shut down, shut up, bottling up issues, will not be able to totally release himself or herself. I mean herself. So we see that we need to work on one another, ensure that there is no grudge, ensure that you are not also defrauding another person. Then some people defraud one another because they are not enjoying the sex. They have not learned to know one another. They have not learned to know what excites the partner. They have not learned to enjoy to, to, to find out how can my partner enjoy this. And they're not seeking for counsel. Some are even bringing their own believing life, something that they are watching, um, maybe all this excited movie, blue film, what they have heard from their friend. They are bringing it into this union instead of allowing the Holy Spirit even to guide them. So some of them have injured emotionally their wives. And the wife is like, do what you want to do and just leave you. Some of them have been wounded. Some of them are not properly aroused in readiness even for it. So, so many things are going wrong. And if it is not discussed and prayerfully handled and sometimes cancer being sought for, mm. some of them may really not be helped. Some of them have been in marriage for many years and they are still not enjoyed sexual um, relationship. So we need to understand this. It is given to us to enjoy and God expects us to enjoy it. And if you are not enjoying, let's sit down and discuss how we can be helped even in this situation. Uh, I remember one of our parents in the Lord told us that the Bible says, when, when two of you shall agree as touching a point, he said, and you agree upon it. He said, even God will, even will say amen concerning it. When a man and a woman are ready for sexual intercourse, they have had foreplay, play, they have played with one another, and they are now having he said before they reach um, um excited state. Orgasm. I've forgotten the name now. Orgasm. Orgasm. Thank you, sir. Before they reach orgasm, he said, whatever it is that they are praying for, trusting God for, let one of them just mention it in prayer. He said, at that height, they are one spirit, soul, and body. He said, hmm. it will be done. If I that day we were challenged, he said, go and try it. And I challenge whoever is listening to me. To also go and try it. Is it going for an interview? Is there any challenge that the two of you are facing? In a situation where there is no offense and the two of you are ready, when you have one spirit, soul, and body, you just need to breathe it in prayer and you will see that God will do it. Even the devil knows. So he cheats us. He does not want us to be one. He doesn't want us to use our sexual relationship as a tool in the place of prayer. God honors it. In fact, when he looks at the two of you enjoying one another, he sees it as righteousness. It is when you do it, when you are not supposed to do it, or with whom you are not supposed to do it, that it becomes a wickedness in the sight of the Almighty God. Then it's a knowing. It enhances your oneness. Mm. It's a knowing. It's a knowing. I don't know how God did it. He said, when you know one another, you will be one. So it's it, it, it enhances your unity, the intimacy. Nobody will be able to Oh, nearly there. Nobody will be able to separate the two of you when that has said. So I have been trying to resolve issues between husband and wife before. And the Holy Spirit says I should go into their bedroom. So when I just say, how is your bedroom? Like The man said, actually, that is where the problem is. <laughs> you see, if she can amend that area, there will not be any problem at all. The man said, eh, eh, as if you come food, you know, and that is the issue. He, as a wife, if you are not satisfying your husband, your soup will not be sweet. If yeah. you are working, you will not have to work. 
there is nothing you do that will be acceptable. And that is just the basic truth. And a woman, too, when you do things that are pleasing in his sight, that is it. And as a man, when you do things that are pleasing in the sight of your wife, give her time. Listen to her. Create it. Don't forget that the two of you are one. Now, some men have not left father and mother, left their work. They still come home with laptop. They get busy with work. They don't have time to listen and even play, even with the wife. So these areas where we consciously and deliberately and intentionally do this, like our brother has said, work it out. It's a salvation of a kind. When mm -hmm. you work it out, we will have peace in our various homes. Not only will you enjoy, you will have what to teach the coming generation. And gradually the devil will be losing his hold over Christian homes. In the mighty name of Jesus. God will help us in Jesus' name. And thank Amen. you so, so very much. In fact, many of the questions I would have said I was going to ask, you've already answered them. And um, I just want to reiterate what you have said. I know many wives, you always ask that question. Is it food? For a man, it is food. <laughs> All right. And um, and like, like you have rightly said, Auntie, I, I think one more intimacy I want you to talk about is the financial intimacy. Because I know two key things that normally start okay. problems, sex and money. Mm. All right, so I want you to talk about the financial uh, oneness or intimacy before I before I let you go, man. Okay, you know, as we are talking, we are looking at the Bible, and it is assumed that we are talking to people who are ready to do God's bidding. It's assumed that we are talking to people who have their fund, the foundation of their home in God's in God and in God's word. Some may not even have that foundation, but at any time they submit their relationship unto God, God is willing to take it up. Even if we have the foundation on the rock, we cannot afford to build it with shoddy materials. Mm -hmm. The foundation will be there, but how you build, God is also interested in it. So God has already told us what and what we need to do. From the book of Genesis that we started with, he said, for this cause, shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and the two of them will be one flesh. You see this issue of one flesh, that is the, gen I mean, the definition of marriage. God wants the two of them to be one. They were one originally, inside one body. When the Lord gave the assignment to the man, God saw it was not good for him to be alone. He couldn't get a helper from all his other creatures. He now brought out, brought out a rib from the inside the man and fashioned into a help. So this female was inside the man. When they were separated for the purpose of assignment for help, they are still expected to be one. And when God says they should come together to be one, it means one in everything. Mm. One in everything. A woman may have goals and aspiration before meeting with the man but when they come together they are supposed to be one in everything and this issue of becoming one is something that we must believe in is something that we must pursue is something that we it must be a reality even with us for instance when <laughs> We cannot say we'll be one physically. We'll be one in our thinking, in our pursuits. In Ephesians chapter 5, that we normally read to see the relationship between the Lord Jesus and the church and a type that we are to follow. The Bible says in verse 24, Ephesians 5 24, it says, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands. In everything and when it says in everything it includes finances but because the two people that are involved they are coming from different backgrounds they are coming with different mindsets it is before they get married that this is supposed to be discussed we will be one in doing this oneness in everything in raising our children in the kind of job we will do 
if it is not oneness that we must that must be attained in our own home nothing will make me to drop my certificates to pursue ministry with my husband because i know i have been sent to help him, and i know that some things will stand in the way many of the reasons that we give as women is that when i go out there to work i must bring in money so that it will help the man there are some men no matter what they do they can't bring in as much money as a woman will bring mm. it's a grace and it's a help there are some women that have been made such a rich help to the man even if they carry sand it will turn to money they, i mean it's god given but it doesn't make her to be a husband it doesn't suddenly turn out to be a husband and it does not reduce the husband because he's not bringing it as much money as the wife because it's a it's a misplaced is a misconception for us to feel that it is money that the man is bringing home that makes him the head. Mm. No, it mm. is not money. It's a spiritual mm. authority that mm. makes him the head. Even when people are bringing him money, he still has the right as the head under his own head, who is Jesus, to determine what goes to where and what will not go to where. That's the correct head. If money is coming in through him, fine. If money is coming in through the world, it's still our money. That is the language of oneness. Language of oneness is I, I. I mean, it's our, 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 our parents, our money, our our car, our children. But when you begin to hear things like my money, my salary, my car, your mother, my mother, then we are not pursuing oneness. When we are pursuing oneness, our vocabulary will change. Our perspective to things will change also. When what God wants to bless is the oneness. When people are talking about money, I said there is always a conflict between God and mammon. Wow. You will love one and hate the other. Mm -hmm. I am not in any way saying that husbands are not supposed to work. Even the Bible says, he that does not work should not eat. Male and female. Male and female. But when money is coming in, we see it as, as God's provision for us. Then we need God's wisdom to decide what goes to where. Sometimes when somebody is saying, especially as women, eh, my money, eh, do I need to go to my husband even to ask for everything I need? I should be able to have right even for everything I say. <laughs> when as your husband becomes your vagina, God will be jealous. He is our provider. He may go through your husband. He may come through you. But I see people mentioning uh, there has to be 60% of clinical, 50% of whatever that you will pick the one that is workable for you. I said, I don't know about that. But one thing I know is that if you marry a husband whose Lord is not Jesus, he will not give, he will not superintend over the home in a correct way. So true. Because he will be giving instruction from his own mind. He will not be considerate, he will not be merciful. He will not be compassionate. He will not even learn how to wait and trust God for provision for his family. Mm -hmm. That is what makes some wives even to rebel and wants to take authority. But when a woman has a husband whose Lord is Jesus, he will not know that even if you say we need this thing, and the man said the Lord will provide, she will believe that the Lord will provide. She would have seen testimonies of how God is providing. From one time to the other and there will not be any but you see if we do not put first thing first and we are expecting it's just like somebody who is not godly you are not following after jesus you are expecting 100 percent submission from your wife even you your head is not under authority or crap ah, it doesn't work like that or as a wife my head is not under the authority of my husband and i'm expecting super submission from my children and from everything that is under me, it doesn't work like that. Mm. But if you do not break around, authority rolls down from the top. Money comes to us. Money is a messenger. Money is not supposed to separate us. In fact, money as a form of blessing can break home if it is not properly managed. A wow. woman whose husband has brought a car told me one time that, uh, Mommy, I didn't bring my car to meeting. I will follow you home. I said, why? He said, let him come and pick me in your house. At least we have time to talk. We will have time to talk. I don't see him. 
we hardly have time. I said, eh, you the people are using your own testimony to beg God for <laughs> the prayer with God. Hey, give me my own heart too, as you have blessed this person. So blessings can scatter home if it is not properly managed. Mm. So we need God even for everything. Now, if the two of you have agreed to be spending money together, in, in our own time, I was the one working. My husband, we started the church. He started as a full-time pastor. I was earning salary. The money will still be with me, but we are spending it together. And I didn't see myself as having a right to just dip my hand, you know, in the, in the money and go and spend it anyhow. In those early days, you know, you would discuss. You would say, this is what this one will go for. This one, this one will go for. And as a wife, you give your husband, at least he is the head. If he is the head, allow him. When he says a thing you don't agree with, you also have access to the Holy Spirit, who is also his head. So you don't just, I don't know, when you are a subordinate, you don't talk to the authority over you anyhow. These are principles that we break, and we expect God to support us. Some of us, underneath, we are doing things that are wrong, and we are justifying ourselves. So God is not supporting us. So many of us have been praying some prayers, all manners and kinds of prayers, and it's not bringing any result because God is not supporting us. You cannot do evil that good may come. Oh, some people may say, you don't know my husband, he's very selfish. He doesn't think about me. No problem. That selfishness is part of what you have come to help him out of. Mm. If we practice the selfishness mm. with you, why you are also to bring you bring him out of that selfishness? So many things say, ah, he spends too much. Okay. That's who he is. You are the only one seeing it. And so when you take the matter to God, wisdom will be given to you on how such things will be handled. Like my husband, I used to say that ah, it's like a house person, you know, you just spend money. Somebody will not think of tomorrow. Oh, me like this, I will calculate and whatever. And we have to be one. How do we work it out without the Holy Spirit? I remember we have entered a shop before. And he wanted to buy something for me. Oh, it's me he wanted to buy. And I felt I didn't need it. I didn't need this thing. He insisted he would buy it. Then I started praying. Then I just said, Andy, why don't we put it, you know, I mean, with this, uh, I mean, cashier. Let's go and check other shops. We may, we may find a cheaper one. Because I prayed. Holy Spirit followed my talk. He agreed. Ordinarily, he would not agree. So we went away from that shop, put it on labor, and then we went to other shop. That's how we went around. And in that shop, I was saying, Hera, Kasataya, Le Kasotoria, we will not buy anything in this shop in the name of Jesus. <laughs> we will not buy it in the name of the Lord Jesus. You know, my principle, oh, what peace we often forfeit. All because we do not carry it to God in prayer. I have not been given the amount to control him, but I have a relationship with the one who can control him. And I don't want to break that relationship with Jesus also. So we didn't buy it in that shop. We succeeded in not buying it at all. When we returned to where we got to, he now said, ah, that dress. Even me, I said, ah, that dress. <laughs> he said, it's you. We did not allow you to buy it. I said, how did we forget? But we didn't buy it. So many times, because he has not seen it. And on my own side too, I may be myopic, I may be limited in my thoughts. He may be seen ahead. I may say, why did he buy one bag? We could have spread the money over one thing. The day that one bag we pay off for me, that's when I'll be appreciating his foresight for buying the one bag. All of us are not the same. And we are not at the same level. But there is something in me that is needed by him. There is nothing in, something in him that is needed by me. Mm -hmm. So we need to work it out with patience, with long-suffering, with understanding one another, giving each person their rightful place, then we'll be able to work it out. But if we insist that it's not happening in that person's family, it has to happen here, no. But some of us, we hold on to our money. I even heard that this is, they are saying, and women are saying, my money is my money, his money is our money. <laughs> Don't let money come in between you. I even tell people, I say, what if you lose the job? What if the job is no longer there? We'll say, oh, God forbid, in Jesus' name, God forbid. In the days when even employers owe salary, and the money is not forthcoming. What will you say? Then we don't even give room for God's provision. We don't give room. For. So this thing, there is no legislation. The issue is you do it together. 
And so when you do it together, you have this understanding together. If togetherness is not in that aspect, we are not pursuing oneness. Mm -hmm. Then trust will no longer will not be there. You will not be able to trust one another. You will not be able to learn to, you know, uh, predict what this person will be able to do. So my own uh, counsel is that every wife should pray that their head should be correct. <laughs> that means their husband should be correct. And what makes the head to be correct is that this head must be correctly positioned under Christ. A mm -hmm. husband that doesn't have fear of God, where will he get the wisdom to run the home in a, in a correct and acceptable way? So our priority should be gotten right. The husband doesn't have time for God. He's pursuing money. He's not bothering you. The most important thing is if you can bring money, if you can meet all your needs financially. Hmm. You are leaving a particular problem unsolved. In the day when you will need Jesus, mm. you will discover that my head is not really correct. <laughs> and if my head is not correct, they don't cut it to take it to psychiatric hospital. All of us are not correct. That is just the issue. So wow. I think each couple needs to settle down before God and to God to work it out for them. God will show us mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow. Auntie, thank you so, so, so very much. <laughs> We thought we would not go beyond one hour, but we are going almost two hours now. And wow. speaking, I, I know there's still so much you still want to say, but I really appreciate, wow. I mean, I, I really appreciate this, your time with us. And um, even the financial side that you, you didn't plan for before actually was a big chunk that you spent time on and is very good. Because these are some of the things bringing, uh, I mean, issues and troubles to homes. And it's all about not understanding the principles, the spiritual principles that guide all these things. So, Auntie, thank you so much. I really appreciate this time you spent. Um, with God bless us. you, sir. Thank you, ma. Um, so, we as at home, I, I'm so sure... I've, I've written notes, <laughs> even though I'm even the one that is the host, but I've been taking notes. I've been taking notes, and um, I've had a lot of things that um, I've seen other perspective of things I, I thought I knew before, even as Auntie was talking. And um, I know for some of you, you may have questions. Um, please get in touch with me if you have questions. And if it's um, Antibola, you want to make answer um, some of your questions, um, I will direct your questions to her and I will let you get a response back. So please freely send in your, your questions. Through it all happens to help people. Through it all happens to, um, Bible says you will know the truth and then the truth will set you free. The truth you have encountered today, don't just know it for head knowledge. Apply it to your life, then you will be set free. And that's why you are hearing this. Mm. That's why you are hearing it. So please, um, don't fight against the word of God. Don't fight against the truth. You can do nothing against the truth, but just to do everything for the truth. Is that okay? So please, you have suffered enough for some of us struggling in our struggling in our marriages. You have suffered enough. You have gone through all these heartaches long enough. Please settle down to receive help. You may need to watch this um, video over and over and over again. Husband and wife use it um, to do those recreational and intellectual. Uh, intimacy, watch it over and then be discussing, are we handling this? Are we doing this? And I tell you, you will be far, far better off after that exercise. Is that okay? Until once again, thank you very much for agreeing to bring it all. Um, and he said, hey, what will I say? <laughs> now you, now I, of course, I've sat under administration severally, so I know that and then most times don't know what to say, but once you start talking, the ministry just takes control. So, Auntie Ashe, I really appreciate you. And um, 
my regards to to Pastor uh, Daniel. <laughs> Thank you for we appreciate him for admin granting you this um, grace to share with us. I'm so grateful, Auntie. I hope if I I mean, batch on you another time, and I say, Auntie, please come and teach us another thing. I hope you you will not deny us. <laughs> We love we have us. Thank you very much. God I appreciate you too. All right. God bless you, sir. All right. So be all at home. God bless you. Thank you for spending this time with us on Trader. If you have been blessed, please share this video with others so that they can also um, be blessed and to learn out of that which the Lord, I mean, has blessed you with. Please share it. If you are new um, to True It All, please subscribe to this channel. Channel There are a lot of other videos uh, we've done in the last um, four years. Please um, take time to go through some of the past videos. And I'm so sure you'll be so amazingly blessed and inspired. All right. So till I come your way next Thursday, please stay blessed. Keep loving God, keep fearing Him, and keep working out your marriage for the married ones here with fear and trembling. And for those that are trusting God for future partners, please look for that which is godly. Don't go by the sight. The Bible says man look um, at the outward appearance, that God looks at the heart. All right, so please be careful in doing your spec specs for the younger ones. So God bless you all. Have a blessed evening in Jesus' name. Bye.